Pugs are really adorable creatures. They are funny and quirky, and they are really good at making hearts melt. They draw a lot of attention when in out in walks, and act like magnets for people to come and pet them. However, cute and adorable as they are, getting a pug, or any dog, in that sense, is not something that you should take lightly. It has been said over and over again, and even become a cliché. But really, a dog, regardless what the breed is, is a commitment for life, not just for Christmas. Here, in this video we have collected few pros and cons you should watch out before buying a pug. They do not take up much space. If you want a small dog, you may want to look no further than the lovable pug. Pugs fall under the toy dog category, so they won't take up as much space in your apartment. Another characteristic that make pugs great apartment dogs is that they are not known to be yappy dogs, and won't bark as much. The exception to this is when a stranger approaches. In fact, this is what makes them decent watchdogs for your apartment, along with the fact that they are also highly alert and loyal to their humans. Pugs are natural cuddlers. If you want a small affectionate dog that will bond easily with you, the pug might be your go-to breed. Pugs absolutely love cuddling with their humans. Pugs tend to crave it more than others and tend to be natural cuddlers. This breed lives to please their human companions and this is what makes them a great pet for families, seniors, or anyone else. Pugs get along well with other animals. Pugs tend to be lovers, not fighters. So they'll try to endear themselves not only to you and your children, but to any other pets you might own. Because of their size and sleeping habits, they tend to do well with cats, it's not uncommon to catch your pug and cat snuggling together for a nap. They are not aggressive or dominant and don't mind sharing their space with others as long as they get all the attention they need. They are lap dogs. A lap dog or lap dog is a dog that is both small enough to be held in the arms or lie comfortably on a person's lap and temperamentally predisposed to do so. Lap dogs are not a specific breed but is a generic term for a type of dog of small size and friendly disposition. Pugs were originally bred to be lap dogs amongst the ancient Chinese royals and elites. With this in mind, pugs will follow you everywhere and anywhere they can, from the kitchen, dining table, on your lap, in between your legs when you're sleeping, even to the bathroom. They do not require much exercise. It's important to keep a healthy balance between the indoor apartment lifestyle and enjoying some time outdoors with your pug. This is essential to both physical and mental stimulation, and keeping their stress levels to a minimum. Pugs have a quite low energy lifestyle, and once they pass their hyperactive puppy stage of life, they they are likely to sleep throughout most of the day as an adult pug. Even though they have relatively low energy levels when compared to other breeds, they can still get quite hyperactive at times. After looking at these amazing things about pugs, here are some cons that you need to watch out before or decide to purchase a pug. Dogs shed hair seasonally. Pugs shed hair all year round. Having a pug at home involves you getting into a closer relationship with the hoover. If you already hoover once or twice a week, having a pug at home will mean getting your hands on the hoover at least a couple more times, year round. Fawn colored pugs have a double coat, which means that they shed and shed and shed. The short, long hair gets stuck everywhere. Say goodbye to your black clothes, or be prepared to arm yourself with a sticky roll on your way out. Silent, quiet nights no more. Pugs are not quiet sleepers. If you already struggle with your partner's snoring habits, think that getting a pug could also mean getting yourself into an orchestra of snores every night. Pugs snore, and when they do, they do it very loud. Be prepared to arm yourself with earplugs, or get another dog that has a bigger nose. Washing your pug is a messy business, as we all know every dog breed of different bathing requirements, depending on many factors such as whether they are an outdoor or indoor dog, how long their coat is, how much natural oil they tend to produce, the condition of their skin, and so on. As indoor dogs bred for companionship, pugs tend to sleep with their owners on their bed, and is in and around your home for most of the day, so you don't want them to be dirty or smelly. You need to wash your pug for every two to four weeks and when you do so, they shed a lot. The coat comes off when you get your pug wet, when you shampoo it, when you rinse off the shampoo, when you towel it and when you blow dry it. You will see it flying like smoke when brushing and drying. 
It will get everywhere, in all walls, floor, clothes, every single surface is a potential target of that fluff flying around. Washing your pug means washing up every single surface in the room where you do it. Cute little wrinkles, a fishy problem, pugs smell. Bad. Those beautiful face wrinkles that make pugs so adorable, are the coziest place for bacteria and fungus to thrive, causing your little puggy to be a smell bomb. And what a smell it is. The pugs creases demand, require, beg to be cleaned regularly, or you will face the consequences. Cleaning a pug's wrinkles is no easy business either, as they literally hate it when you even try to get close to their face. Nagging, pulling, pushing, biting the tissue, grumping, and running away in a maddie fit, are some of the ways pugs say no to anyone getting close to clean their faces. So it is easy for anyone to get discouraged and forget to clean them. Until they are faced with a smell, and get a massive vet bill because of a skin infection. So if you are not prepared to teach your pug to allow you to clean his face, then do not get a pug. Pugs are extremely sensitive to heat. Extremely. Read again. Extremely. Having those cute little faces comes with a price, and that is that they have a really hard time cooling themselves down in the summer. Dogs do not sweat as people do, they cool themselves through the mouth. Given that pugs have a short mouth, the amount of air needed to cool them down when exposed to heat is not enough. This means that they overheat very easily. When they get too hot, they start panting quickly, trying to get air, and sounding like they are struggling to breathe, which they are. It is very scary and dangerous, and they can die very quickly from it. So if this happens, you need to find a quick way to cool them down, like throwing them in the next fountain you see, or carrying them back home and getting them under the shower, etc. So if you want to run and play outside under the warm Sunday of July, please do not get a pug. Get a terrier or something with a bigger nose that tolerates heat. I hope, with this information, you will be able to figure out if you would love to purchase a pug.